Hi everyone, welcome back. This particular process is develop the project management plan. Now, where does develop project management plan fit into the broader scheme of things? Well, first of all, we've developed the project charter, we've identified the stakeholders, and now we're going up to develop the project management plan. And this is an iterative process because we are putting all of these bits and pieces into the project management plan as well, but we do it as we're going along and developing it. The project management plan is the process of defining, preparing and coordinating all of the plan components and consolidating them into an integrated project management plan, usually a single document or a single page or you know a, a folder perhaps even that might have all of the different things required for your project, scope, schedule, cost, quality, risk, all of those things. And why do we do it? Well, it's the production of a comprehensive document that defines the basis of all project work and how that work will be performed. It's our plan. And if we don't plan, then we have a higher likelihood of failure. So this is really important to do. And as we said, we'll be doing it over and over and sort of improving it as we're going along. The project management plan defines how the project will be executed, monitored, controlled, and then finally closed. The project management plan can be either a summary level or it can be detailed and include more accurate information as the project progresses. So nothing is set in stone and it depends on the organization, depends on the project, depends on the project manager yourself as well. Is it just a few lines that we're doing um, to note this stuff down or is it a large comprehensive document with all of the things that we need and all of those different knowledge groups specifically detailed? The project management plan should also be baselined. That means we, uh, we lock it at a, at a place in time and it can't change until it goes through the perform integrated change control process through a change request and the change control board. We will definitely get into this in more detail. But before a project management plan is baselined, it can be changed as many times as you want. And this is a key thing for your project management exam. But you can change it as many times as you want. Once it has been locked in at a certain point in time and baselined, then you will need to go through that perform integrated change control process and go through the proper channels to change any aspect of your project management plan. The inputs, tools and techniques and the outputs for this process. Where inputs are our project charter, outputs from any other process, so obviously risk, quality, schedule, cost, all of these will be going into our project management plan. So these are the outputs of those other processes. Any environmental factors and any organizational process assets, so templates or um, any of the, the politics or you know uh, what goes on in an organization, any regulations that we need to abide by. All of that will go into the project management plan. Tools and techniques that we'll use will be expert judgment of the people uh, you know, in certain areas that we need their expert judgment on. So we need to help extract that information from them as we're going along to develop our plan. We're data gathering because of that, brainstorming, focus groups, interviews, and we'll need interpersonal and team skills to do that. And of course, all of that is sort of brought together with meetings. So you'll be having many, many meetings, trying to grab all of this information, this expert judgment from the relevant people in order to create the project management plan, which brings us to the output. So there's our output there. And the single output of this process is the actual project management plan itself. As you can see, the project management plan process has an input into every single process after the project management plan. So if we just quickly go back to the, to the uh, overall table, basically from here onwards, so moving forward from here, all of these processes, all of these processes, this one and this one, all of those will, uh, the project management plan has an input into all of those processes. So that's something that, you, that will help you on, the, on your project management exam as well. Let's look at the inputs in more detail. The project charter is an input into the project management plan. So the project team uses that project charter as a starting point for initial project planning. It's that high level snapshot of the project and it will be elaborated more in various parts of the project management plan. So think of it as a high level overview and then when we're 
doing the project management plan, we're getting much more into the nitty gritty as we're going along and starting to deliver the project. And so it has to be, you know, it basically it goes from high level to much more detailed in the project management plan. Any outputs from other processes, so subsidiary plans, risk plan, quality plan, schedule plan, cost plan, and any of those baselined documents, so the scope that we're delivering might be baselined or set at a point in time so that it can't change, all of those things will go into the project management plan. And controlled changes to these documents might require to go back into the project management plan if they're changed as well. Any environmental factors, uh, enterprise environmental factors like legal regulations, organizational structure, um, the infrastructure that you're working in, organizational governance frameworks, so how is business done within the company that you're working in, and the project management body of knowledge itself is a very nice enterprise environmental factor. We can use these processes to get the work done in an easier manner. And of course, organizational process assets, so templates, risk procedures, communication requirements, um, historical information and the lessons learned repository, the project information from previous similar projects, all of these things will exist in the, in the organization that you're delivering a project to. So gathering these process assets is a really nice thing and it will help you to, to get the work done in a better way. Project closure guidelines, uh, maybe there's a project management plan template that exists in an organization. Sometimes there is, and that will help you a lot. Uh, what are the existing processes and procedures that you need to abide by? Tools and techniques for developing the project management plan. We'll need our expert judgment from the various experts in the various areas. And this might be uh, things like determining uh, the resources and skill levels that are needed, defining the level of configuration management, so what documents will be baselined, uh, determining which project documents will be subject to formal change control, um, tailoring the project management processes. So is it gonna be a big project or a small project? Do we only need a few of the project management processes, uh, not all of them? And prioritizing the work on the project to ensure that there is no conflict of resources. Maybe we're tapping into a project management office here and they have a list of projects and they say, oh yep, there's definitely time here we can reduce our impact on the business or, or on the sponsors area, and we can fit this project in here, for example. These are the various experts across the organization that you will need to check in with. So you'll be data gathering, you'll be gathering that information from them. You can do that through brainstorming, which is you know, uh, usually having a meeting, uh, getting everyone together, saying, here's our problem, and um, you know, what are the ideas, writing them all down, and usually grouping them together sometimes as well, that can help. Checklists, maybe you need to actually gather data on a process and you can look at a checklist, you know, maybe you're doing this, this item five, six times and this item only two times. And you know, this is the item that we wanna focus on for our project, for example, as a checklist. Focus groups, getting everyone together uh, and using something uh, and then watching how it's being used, getting their feedback as customers and interviews as well. One-on-one -on -one usually is an interview and you're just gathering that information that way. Interpersonal team skills will be used for this process as well. We might have conflict management. Maybe someone does not agree. Maybe there's a competing project in the organization. How do we manage that conflict? And there'll be more detail in a, as this goes along uh, about conflict management because it's very important. It will come up quite a bit in your project management career. You'll need to facilitate those meetings and have the meeting management and make sure it goes, goes quite well itself too. For meetings, uh, there are small projects and large projects. Now, if it's a small project, it's usually just one team that performs the planning and execution. In this case, kickoff occurs shortly after a project is initiated and, uh, and basically the whole team is involved in planning. But for large projects, the, the project management team normally does the majority of the planning and the remainder of the project team is brought on once that planning is complete. So there might be a lot more people involved in a large project and they just need to be brought on after this initial plan is completed. Now the output to this process is the project management plan itself. And within that plan, you'll see all of the other plans that we will be creating as part of our project management uh, plan, basically. So you've got scope management plan, requirements management plan, the schedule management plan, 
What is the time frame for our project? What's the cost involved in our project and how are we managing that? The quality and testing approach, how do we know that it's fit for purpose? The resources, who is coming on to help? Is it external to our company? Is it from the sponsors part of the business and they're getting all of these different people to help and uh, those are the resources involved. Risk management, communications management, procurement or, um, or any time we're buying things or procuring something and the stakeholder management plan. All of these subsidiary plans will be used to, uh, as an, uh, to go into the project management plan and that's what we're sort of going to be creating over time. You'll have baselined documents as well, as we spoke about a little bit before. The scope baseline is locked in a place in time. The schedule and the cost is also locked in a place in time. And then to make any changes going forward, you will need to go through the change request process and the change control board, which could, is usually made up of the sponsor uh, and a few other people who, uh, who will need to approve that change before it goes back into the, uh, the baselined documents themselves. Additional components that might go into the project management plan, change management plan because of that, of course, configuration management plan, which documents will be baselined, the performance measurement baseline, the project life cycle, is it agile, is it waterfall, uh, the development approach, similar to the project life cycle as well, and management reviews. So, you know, how are we reviewing different milestones to make sure that we're getting what we want as the project goes along. And lastly, many more project documents that you might come across. Things like quality reports, re the requirements traceability matrix. How do we know that the requirements meet uh, the outputs that we're delivering? Resource requirements and resource calendars. Who is, uh, who is coming onto our project and when? And are they available? That's our resource calendar. Risk registers, noting down the risks. Schedule forecasts, are we on track to deliver? The team charter, how will the work actually be, do be done? We're writing down the agreement as our team uh, will be, you know, will meet every day. We might have daily stand-ups. Uh, we might have retrospectives. These are all the things of our team agreements, our way of work. There are many, many project documents and you will see these as we go along all of the project management processes as part of the Pumbok guide. And this is from the project management plan, so developing the project management plan from the project management integration process.